In this video, we'll be looking at the best dungeons for raw gold farming in the world of Warcraft. I would bookmark this video because while the gold farms presented are very simple to execute, there's some really important details which can really help with your gold farming and are easy to miss on a first viewing. With massive gold deflation and a player base that responded to the call to the Battle of Azeroth with mass desertion, it is currently tough trying to sell items on the auction house, especially on small to medium population realms. Because of this, there is a huge renewed interest in raw gold. The first opportunity I discovered is at the seat of the Triumvirate. And yes, I did have to Google how to say that. Now, to get to the entrance of this dungeon, you'll need to have unlocked the last stage of the Argus campaign. And you'll want to port in from the Vindicar to the Shadow Guard incursion. That's in Macari or Macare or Macarena or however the hell it's supposed to be pronounced. Now, the advantage of the seat as a farming opportunity is that you get a ton of trash near the entrance that drops both gold and vendor items that are generally in excess of anything you can find elsewhere, at least in terms of pure raw gold. Please don't tell me you can make more by doing stuff with the auction house. I know there are dozens of methods, some on this channel and a lot more on my Patreon, where you can make four times as much gold. But there are very good reasons why some players are choosing to focus exclusively on raw gold right now, which I'll cover at the end of the video. Now, a major advantage of the sea is that you can mount up and you can just run around in a big circle, pulling all the trash around the first boss. Now, if your gear is good or your class is really tanky, then you can probably do the whole thing in one pull. If your class is squishy or your gear is below 350, say, then i do it in two pulls. It doesn't make that much difference in terms of the time it takes. I'd recommend some add-on like the wonderfully named Crap Away or Auto Vendor to get rid of all the stuff you loot because your bags will fill up really quickly. There's a lot of items and vendoring them manually is not remotely efficient. Your profits will be around 200 gold per run or 2000 gold for around 10 minutes work before instance lockout. So at max speed you can do this for around 12,000 gold per hour invested, which is probably the maximum amount of raw gold you could make from farming any dungeon or instance. Most of the time runs will yield slightly less than 200 gold, but occasionally you'll get a high value vendor item worth over 100 gold which bumps up your average considerably. Having completed the run, just exit the instance and reset it and repeat the whole process. Now what I tend to do is park a tune at the entrance and just do 10 minute bursts at a time and then go and do something else. But if you want to farm for longer periods, you can try alternating runs with mobs in the second part of the uninstant seat of the triumvirate. In the open world, the mobs don't respawn instantly, and they leash unlike dungeon mobs. So it isn't quite as efficient, but you can still get hundreds of gold per pull if you round up enough mobs at once. Now the problem with farming this seat of the triumvirate is that while the raw gold is really good, that's really all there is. There aren't any other drops of note. One of the things you can do is use one of the shoulder enchants for legion. I'm using the pet shoulder enchant here, which allows uh, mobs that you kill a chance to drop shiny pet charms. Now, and these can be traded for pets. The reason I'm focusing on pets is that there's a rumor doing the rounds at the moment that Blizzard are going to unleash some new pet-based mobile app, and this may be integrated with pet battling in general, in which case the value of pets will increase exponentially. Greetings. Now there's an alternative to farming Seat of the Triumvirate, and that's the Iron Docks dungeon in Gorgrond Dranol. Now this farming opportunity has both advantages and disadvantages relative to the seat. Again, you can just round up the trash at the entrance and kill the first boss repeatedly. 
you can also remain mounted whilst doing so. This is even easier and faster than in the seat of the Triumvirate. The kicker here is the Blues, which drop for the same van der Valleys that they used to drop for in the actual expansion of Warlords of Drela, where this dungeon was introduced. You'll make an average of 160 gold per run here, and you'll be able to do a run in a minute or even less with practice in the right class. So naturally that will be 1600 raw gold for the 10 runs and instance lockout, which will be roughly 10,000 gold per hour. Now that's less gold than we got from farming the seat of the triumvirate. So why would we do this farm? And it turns out there's a really good reason. Firstly, unlike the seat, valuable items do drop quite regularly in this dungeon, usually from the first boss. And I'm not talking about Transmorg here, though some other YouTubers have claimed that you can make 150,000 gold per hour from this dungeon selling Transmog. I, I don't believe a word of it. No, what I'm talking about is these components of the Garrison Auction House, which sell for at least 3,000 gold. Uh, some of them go up to 5,000. Now, I would only put these up one at a time on the auction house, but there is a niche audience for them, and they do sell eventually. You'll always get at least one of these components before instance lockout. Now, there's another special trick here involving class trials, and you can tell I've smuggled this one in near the end of the video in the hopes that Blizzard are no longer watching. Now, I'm going to take my class trial Tauren Shaman to the Iron Docks, which is a very entertaining journey for all the wrong reasons. I suppose to be fair to Blizzard they've only had four months to fix this. And the development team were apparently worried about WoW Classic being buggy. Now when you enter any legacy dungeon or raid on a class trial normally what happens is you get an error message and you get kicked out of the dungeon. But when you try to enter the Iron Docks on a class trial look what happens. You get inside no problems. And in fact, this is true of all the Draenor dungeons. This is probably because class trials were introduced in Warlords of Draenor, and they've never updated the code to exclude those dungeons. Now, class trial lockout doesn't apply across realm. So what you can do is just create class trial characters on different realms, and farm pretty much infinitely. Now, this even applies to merged realms. So, for example, my realm, Airy Peak, was merged with Bronzebeard a few years ago. So, what I can do is run this instance ten times on one of my Airy Peak main characters. And then I can create a class trial on Bronzebeard and run it another ten times. And because the realms are merged, I can transfer the gold and any items from my class trial tombs straight over to my mains. It's also worth pointing out that Instance Lockout doesn't apply to unique dungeons. So after you've done 10 runs of Iron Docks, say, you can then immediately do a full run of the Everbloom. And you might want to park another class trial outside the Instance just for this purpose. The Everbloom isn't quite as profitable as the Iron Docks, but it's still, it's still worth running. You can only run one additional unique instance of each dungeon, so it's a good idea to complete each of them. So to clarify how this works, you could run 10 Iron Docks and 1 Blood Maul Slag Mines, 1 Skyreach, and 1 Everbloom. All within instance lockout, assuming you're sticking to just the one realm. Now, it should be emphasised that some things are still selling well in the auction house in the higher population realms, and that generally speaking, selling items on the auction house can yield returns far higher than can be obtained from raw gold. Indeed, I have published many strategies on my Patreon, and a few on YouTube, as I said previously, which will yield significantly more than the numbers you would see in this video, assuming your auction house is still reasonably liquid. It is also worth pointing out that doing emissary world quests and a few other things such as the rogue genie quests or some heroic raids from Cataclysm can for temporary periods yield superior raw gold returns to the methods in this video. So by all means do those things first. I personally find that I can usually get those things done in under 40 minutes every day. 
so there's a lot of time left over. But you have to remember that for a lot of people, they prefer the simplicity and instant gratification of raw gold. And for some on smaller realms, the auction house is just not an option right now. Ironically, if you make a video which incorporates auction house trading strategies, you tend to get criticism from the other end of the spectrum for all that reason. But that's just part of the fun of YouTube. So there's the video. If you liked it, why not subscribe? And I can promise you there's going to be some absolutely fantastic content coming out on this channel in the very near future. Thanks for watching. This has been Archvelder.